continuing the discussion with uh, sharing of tips, uh, what made me record this video is that I heard recently of a lady that I know that went to go work at another restaurant. Um, I think she was promised a certain amount of money that she would earn per shift, which was something like 700 rand. She completed her first shift and then she walked out with 500 rand. She was like, but what's happening here? And then they're like, no, no, the manager gets a certain amount, the kitchen gets a certain amount of your tips. And then obviously she resigned just because, one, the restaurant wasn't upfront about how they dividing the tips. Um, and two, it's obviously she just doesn't believe and she's also worked for probably more than 10 years. She's always worked in a system where you get rewarded accordingly. Um, one of my big problems about sharing tips with back of house is that customers believe that the tips will be going to the waiter. So a system where maybe on all the menus it says uh, service charge, gratuity, tips will be shared 50% with the front of house and 50% with the back of house. I think that's fair because then at least the customer knows where the money is going when they tip it. I think a lot of times if you're a waiter, uh, you serve a table for two to three hours, the, uh, the customers have a personal connection with you and then they want to leave you a certain reward. And I think it's not correct if they leave you money and say thank you very much and then some of that money goes to somebody else. Um, my other concern is that I think uh, I worked in the early 2000s as a waiter and we were all earning 100% of our tips basically or 95% at least. So we were all working really hard to make sure customers are super happy. I think it's a practice that developed later in the 2000s where tips started getting shared. I understand the argument. The kitchen works really hard and I know the irritating discussion is like I provide waiter courses where I've had people that do two day waiter course at 500 rand and within two or three months they earn 10,000 rand a month where I know there's a lot of chefs that you know, just down the road from us, we have a culinary institution that charges you about a hundred thousand rand a year. You finish off the two, three years, and then you earn a job. You earn a salary of six thousand rand a month. So you've invested three hundred thousand rand. Plus, you work as a chef a lot of times, longer hours as the waiters, and it's it's a morally. So it's just obviously unfair, you know, I know a lot of times waiters earn more money than some of the restaurant managers. It's unfortunately just the game in the industry here in South Africa. Like I've worked overseas, I was lucky enough to work in London. There is definitely a system of the managers and the chefs earn more, more money as the waiters. So I think when I was a waiter also, we were regulating ourselves or money was almost regulating ourselves and ensuring that there was good service because if you didn't provide good service you didn't get money when you are getting paid a salary or when you start giving some of your wages or your income away to other people it's a bit difficult and i think the incentive starts disappearing for you working really hard and trying to go the extra mile um, you know it's another discussion but obviously, if people earn an income, such as a salary, chefs, whoever, then managers should be managing them. Um, and that's how you get good service going. Uh, I don't believe that the waiter should be earning extra income to support and finance the staff that is working for a certain company. Um, I don't know, there's probably a lot of examples you could use of salespeople you know, and then it's like the harder they work, they make more money, but only a little bit more because they have to give people that are packaging <laughs> the things or maybe people working at reception. If they answer the phone nicely, then obviously it's a better team effort and we're working better together. You know, I 